You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Welcome to Smart Sex, Smart Love. We're talking about sex goes beyond the taboos and talking about love goes beyond the honeymoon. I'm Dr. Joe Court. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so welcome to Smart Sex, Smart Love, and today is a roundtable chat where I have three guests talking about the coming out process, and the title is How I Came Out. Today's podcast is a special episode in honor of National Coming Out Day. My guests this week are 25-year-old Jane Mandley, 29-year-old Jared Boot, and 44-year-old Nick Zelke, who will be sharing their coming out stories and talking about their paths to living their life true to their sexuality. Jane started to question her sexuality in the middle of college after breaking up with a long-term boyfriend and realizing she had a crush on a female classmate. She then spent the summer searching the internet for anything about queer and bisexual women and eventually came out as bi in her final semester of college three years ago. She says that despite some of the pain it caused her family, nothing feels better than living her life authentically. Jared grew up in a conservative southwest Michigan town, and once I start, once he started college at the University of Michigan in 2008, he chose one of his girlfriends from New York City to come out as gay. Jared's conservative upbringing, where he grew up conditioned back in 2008 to think that the Midwest and traditionally masculine culture were not safe for gay men. After his freshman year, it was a winding journey of nearly a decade before he came out a second time as demisexual. Nick, 44, grew up in Detroit and was born female-bodied. Throughout his childhood, his family and friends all knew that he identified as male since he was two years old. When Nick first brought up the idea of transitioning in 1998, it didn't go well at all. But in November 2007, he had a cancer scare. After surgery, Nick found out that the tumor was internal testicles and he was diagnosed as intersex. A year later, he started his medical transition by taking testosterone. Then between March 2009 and January 2010, Nick had a few gender confirmation surgeries. Welcome, all of you. Hi. Thank you. you. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. So I think I'm just going to go around and, you know, whoever wants to maybe chime in, um, and maybe Jane, you could go first, how old you were when you first realized that you were, you self-identify as lesbian, right? A bisexual. Oh, it was bisexual. I'm yes. sorry. No, that's okay. Um, and then what triggered that realization? Yeah, so I was 22 years old, and it was funny. At the end of that relationship I had with a guy um, that I love very much, I actually said to him, I have a feeling I might not be completely straight. And he said, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> so it was uh, after that breakup that I really like scoured the internet um, that whole summer, uh, looking to everything I could. And I ended up coming out to my best friend first. Um I took her to my dad's wedding. He had come out as gay um, years before that. So I've, I felt I was in a really good spot to like initiate that process. And um, shortly after his wedding, then I started coming out to all my siblings. Wow. That's mm-hmm. great. And I'm sorry I did that. I always do that. I, I don't, I don't mean it as a bi erasure and I know you didn't take it that way, yeah. but I always, you know, um, I go right to the game. I still the binary. I still have to <laughs> yeah. really, so thank you for correcting yeah. me. Um, how about you, Jared? What, what would you say, uh, when you first realized that you were gay and then demisexual? Uh, yeah. So, um, when I realized, uh, I was gay, um, uh, it was actually when, uh, the Scooby-Doo movie came out when I was a kid and I was really into Freddie Prince Jr.'s character playing Fred. Um, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Mm. Uh, all the other, uh, boys in my grade are interested in who's playing Velma and Daphne, but not me, not so much. Um, and that was really, um, like when I came to terms with it. Um, and over time, uh, I became, uh, more accepting of my gay identity, but there was something that was still just a little bit off every time I dated someone or every time I hung out, uh, at a gay bar or something like that. Um, the culture just seemed to me to be hypersexualized. And that was because I was demisexual. And I actually realized that, um, uh, through my own work, uh, with a therapist, uh, she, uh, helped me realize that, Hey, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe you're somewhere on the asexual spectrum. And, uh, uh, that was 
really significant for me when I identified as demisexual. And would you define demisexual so everyone knows what that means? Uh, yeah. So, um, like a simple way to think of it is, um, uh, uh, sexual attraction is built after an emotional, like a strong emotional bond, uh, is established with a person. Um, and you can still find other people like aesthetically pleasing, like cute or attractive, but there's not really anything sexual there until that emotional bond is built. All right. Thank you. Thanks for telling us that, Jared. Yeah. Nick, uh-huh. uh, Nick um, how do you self-identify? I identify as male. Okay. Much. Um, it's unless someone asks me like why I decided to be a gender therapist, um, then I will out myself and say, well, I was born female-bodied. Uh, I didn't realize that I was, I didn't even learn that I was intersex until I was 32 and even did my parents. Um, so I identify as male and straight. I, I mean, I guess society would, and I would fit into the category as queer, but I don't really like that word because of the meaning behind it when I was a child. So I know people have reclaimed the word now, but um, I, I don't feel comfortable identifying as queer, but that is the umbrella term that would identify me. Right, because of the LGBTQIA kind of thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And can you tell people, what does intersex mean so they know? Intersex is when someone is born with both male and female reproductive organs or a combination of them. There are many different types of intersex. Um, Sometimes people have external genitalia that are ambiguous, which was my case, I mean, there was a slight difference or some difference where it wasn't just female, but pretty much it was female when I was first born, and that's why the doctor said, oh, you have a female baby. And um, it wasn't enough to question or have the doctors question and do any surgeries. But some people who are born intersex have ambiguous genitalia, um, you know, a combination of a typical male and female anatomy, um, and that's pretty much yeah. Okay. And then some people who are intersex call themselves transgender. Some people who are, or they call themselves intersex. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And I use both words, intersex and transgender equally, because my experiences, my life experiences are that similar of somebody else who identifies as transgender, because I didn't know as a child that I was intersex. So I really don't have the upbringing, same experiences as other people who are intersex who have maybe go um, we're forced to go through um, different surgeries to change their genitalia based on the doctor's request or parents' request. Um, my upbringing was very, very similar to someone else who identifies as transgender, where you are told you were one gender based on your genitalia and you completely identify as, as a different gender. Okay. And then, so since you didn't know, um, but you always knew you were male. So I guess the coming out question to you is how did you know you were male? Like Jane talked about getting on the internet, trying to figure it out. And how did you, like, what were the cues that you were male? That's a great question. So of course I was born in 75. So at two years old and 77, there is no internet. I just have always identified with the boys in my neighborhood, my dad, um, you know, my uncle's just, I would always wear no shirt when I was outside playing. I just literally felt like a boy completely. And whenever my mom would tell me, you know, to get inside and, you know, put a t-shirt on your, your little boobies are out. Um, I would get mad at her and say, I'm, you know, they're flat. Like, what are you talking about? So I, um, I fooled her and put real around band-aids on my, on my nipples. Then I would go back outside because they were covered. And then she would call me back in the house and I would say, you can't see them because they're covered up. Mm -hmm. Um, so I always felt male. I'm not really sure, you know, at two or three, what, what made me realize. I just know that I've always felt like a boy. I yeah. did not, never felt like a girl. Yeah. Throughout your, even your adolescence, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all of you. So the next question I have is how did it affect your family relationships? Jane, maybe you could say first, how did that come about? Yeah. So I was really fortunate, as I said before, that my dad had come out when I was in high school. So my siblings pretty much had all come around. And when I told all of them throughout the fall of 2016, they were all really great about it. Um, even my one sister, who was a little more religious at the time, was really uh, 
awesome. The hardest part was my mom. Mm -hmm. And of course, I knew that going into it, you know, we were a Christian family growing up. So and she still very much is involved in church and stuff. So I knew that she was going to be disappointed. And I also knew there was going to be this other layer of my dad that it was going to be more than just me. It was going to be about her divorce all over again and all that pain because they had tried to stay together for 10 years. Mm. She knew for 10 years. Uh, so yeah, it was a multi-layered situation and, and she cried and it was hard, but, um, she's really great. And she loves me very much. Uh, she's going to come to my wedding, you know, in a couple of years, hopefully. Oh, that's nice. uh, yeah, yeah, you're engaged. Yeah, I'm engaged. So, um, she's great. Even though I know that she thinks that God has a different uh, plan for me and that, you know, I'm bi, so I should still try to find a man, but she is, but she is happy for me as a daughter and she's mm -hmm. not rejecting me, which I am eternally grateful for. Right. So. Cause you're engaged to a woman. Yes, yes. Yeah. I am engaged to one. We've been together for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you, um, you self identify as bi. Can you, uh, define bisexuality for you? Yeah. For me, that just means that I have the capability to be attracted to, um, anyone depending, not, not depending on their gender. So, um, yeah, I have, I've dated a couple people. I have been in love with one man and in love with a woman. Um, yeah. I guess that's what it is for me. All right, great, because everybody has a different definition these days. Right, yeah. The the whole, like, multisexual community is, like, there's so many names and nuances and stuff, but, yeah, that's what it is for me. I never heard that said. That's what I used to love working, because she used to work for me. Yeah, I did. And uh, you would come up with these terms that, I, that you know, there's so, yeah. so multisexual. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, multisexual is a word that, you know, because the whole bisexual and pansexual community, like, not always agreeing, and what are the nuances between those two different terms and, like, I'm, I didn't make it up, but like I have read a lot on the internet trying to figure out like what do all these words mean. And multisexual is a broad term for anyone who isn't straight or gay. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've also heard plural sexual. Yes, right? I've heard that. Yep. Is that mm -hmm. the same thing? I, I can't say for sure, right. but <laughs> no, I know there are a lot of words to describe uh, people who aren't gay or straight. So, okay. yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Jane. Yeah. Jared, how about you with your family? How did that go? Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, it was a little bit, uh, split actually with, uh, um, my mom and brother. It led to me being more present and like, uh, fully in the moment with them, uh, when I'm with them now. Uh, so it definitely has grown and cultivated our relationship. Uh, before there was like all of these, this hidden secret that I was spending all of my time and energy towards keeping hidden. And now it's something that, I'm just able to watch a movie with them or go on a walk with them or go on a vacation and be fully there rather than, oh, I got to hide this and I got to keep this part of me secret. Um, and then with uh, my father, uh, he uh, wasn't very accepting. He like was, uh, I guess, what you would call traditionally masculine uh, in the sense that like, uh, my son can't be gay because uh, that defies, like, what it means to be a man. Uh, so um, there hasn't been much contact there in an, about a decade. That's great. What about uh, being demisexual? Does that uh, – was that a different – did they have a different reaction to that, same reaction? Yeah. So actually, um, when I came out as demisexual, my brother um, – He's younger than me. He, he kind of reacted like, oh, OK, that's cool. And uh, my mom, uh, she was a little confused. Uh, she she kind of had the reaction like, oh, no, now there's another identity that I have to learn more about. Um, but in time, she became more accepting of it. But for her, when I came out as Demi, it was a little bit of a shock and she felt like uh, I was layering identities uh, on her. So, And if I could ask both of you, Jane and um, Jared, so the research shows that um, females come out to their – no, that people come out to their same gender parent last when they're gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Is that true for both of you? It was for me. <laughs> was it? And how about you, Jared? Yeah, it was for me too. Okay. All right. And Nick, um, can you talk about what it was like for your family when you came out um, to them? Sure. Um, as a child, but I've always, when I was in as as male, um, I went to a Catholic school, so I had to wear a plaid skirt and a white blouse <clears throat> that wasn't allowed to wear, um, you know, pants like the boys did. Now, Catholic schools or private schools, it's, it's allowed. But um, it was a, it was okay growing up. Um, after many years of, I think I was like in maybe first or second grade, 
I finally started getting boys toys because every time I would like Christmas or my birthday, when I would get toys that are girls toys, I would just hand them to my sisters and I would eventually have no presents after I'm opening, opening them. So my parents realized that they needed to um, start getting me the toys I actually wanted so I can actually have something to play with. Mm. So that was, as a child, it was, it was fine. Cause I think that they were hoping I was going to outgrow it when I would go up North with my dad, he's a carpenter. And so he, he bought a, a cabin when I was younger. We go up there all the time and work on it. And I asked him to just tell everyone that I was a son because I had short hair and I had boys clothes on. I identified as male. And he was totally accepting with it. He's like, yeah, absolutely. Because people would look at him like he was weird. And he would correct everybody and say, oh, this is my daughter. Um, so going up north with him all the time, the neighbors, the kids, everyone thought that I was male. And it was great. And it, the part when, that it got difficult was as, when I was an adult in 1998 when I told them that I you know I, I always felt male I just revisited again and um, that was really tough on my family because I think uh, both my parents more tough on my father than my dad and I agree I mean I can understand what, what Jared's talking about it's very similar to my dad he's a construction guy a carpenter you know just works with his hands a lot very strong and he was more concerned about how other people would would treat me or would look at us as a family and like what's wrong with the family? Why couldn't they get that under control? And so it wasn't really the best experience for me mm-hmm. um, to come out to them. My mom didn't say anything the night I came out to them. She just cried a lot because she never wanted anyone to be mean to me and hurt me. Mm-hmm. But they always knew. So it was it was really tough in 1998 for a few years and. Throughout the years, it's gotten very, very strong and very great. Now, my parents, or my dad, completely accepting me around, has always accepted me. Just was always hoping that it would be, you know, grow into being a female. But they're very accepting now. Uh, they're very happy, happy for me and proud of me, not everything I've made out of my life. And they're just really glad that I'm, ha- I'm healthy and happy. It's very fortunate, right? Because so many people don't have these kind of very. families uh, that the three of you really have, you know? Um, you know, could, if we could talk about bullying for a minute, um, Jane, have, did you ever experience bullying? Did you ever have anything like that? No, I know I didn't. Okay, that's great. How about you, Jared? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, mostly in middle school and high school, uh, it was mostly the boys like taunting me for not uh, being masculine enough. It's just so crazy to me. I, I know it still goes on. I was so bullied. I mean, I had a horrible, horrible, horrible childhood being bullied. And to think that um, even in, you know, your generation, it's still like that. And I know it's still like that in even the younger generations. It, you know, these no bullying zones, they're not really no bully zones. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as a safe zone, sadly. And how about you, Nick? Were you bullied? Uh, yes. Very, very bad. I was bullied. As a child, once uh, puberty hit, there were there were three boys in my private school in seventh and eighth grade that were bullying me every day, take my lunch, smash it, um, call me the he she, just really, 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 really make fun of me. I was stronger than the other boys, even who played football. Um, I would do more pull ups than them. I would, you know, go to the top of the rope, mm. you know, in the gym class, and faster than anybody. I was made fun of a lot, and then. Um, in high school, I had a lot of friends. I, didn't, I wasn't out to anybody. I still wore male's clothes, and I would be in all the girls' sports and had a lot of friends. And then as an, as an adult, I wasn't really bullied until um, 2007 or 2000, early 2008 when I needed a job. Um, I was an engineer for many years, and I, the economy crashed, and I got a job at a very large hospital in Royal Oak. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started my medical transition, and um, I was bullied by very, very, very terribly by one of the supervisors there, mm. and then also about three or four coworkers um, called the he, she, it, he, she, and it every day. Mm. Um, yeah, one of the supervisors got in my face and tried chest bumping me right after I had chest surgery. Oh my God. Um, and that was terrible. And it really put me mentally back to how I was feeling when I was in seventh and eighth grade, which I totally forgot about. I mean, I remembered going through that, but right. it really put me back in that space again. Right. The head space. So, um, through the help of my therapist, seeing her twice a week uh, for about a year, getting out of that that work environment, um, that, and then since then it's been fine. Wow, I but, didn't know that story yeah. about you. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, let's talk about partners. So, Jane, you want to talk about your relationship and how you met her? And yeah, 
Yeah, so I met my fiance Sarah four years ago. We were both in a writing class. Um, we were both English majors in college, we, um, and we got together about um, yeah two year two and a half years ago. So, yeah. Isn't that like another coming out? I always say it's one thing to tell your family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And that's another thing to see. It's another, right? Right. Like I, when I came out to my mother, I, I cringe at it now, but I felt so torn and, and weird. I told her like, Oh, I'm by like, I might still end up with a guy. Like it's okay. Even though I, I had every intention of dating women. Uh, so, um, and I had my, I, I knew I loved Sarah, even though I was like, oh, I'll, I'll date girls. But I was like, oh, but she's who I want. So and we were really good friends. So once we started dating each other a while later, um, that phone called to my mom and she told me like, I had a feeling this was coming. So <laughs> that was like, that was made it better. But it was, oh, I was so scared to talk to her about it. Mm. Like it's, it's real now. Like it's not just like this idea in my head. It's you're going to see us together. And mm -hmm. it was hard for her. And you're engaged too. That's so nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, that call was hard too. It was like, oh, a bunch of fun calls and oh, we yeah. have to call mom. And <laughs> that was, that was something. So. See, that's what's hard. That's what people don't understand mm -hmm. about being non-heterosexual is mm -hmm. when you're heterosexual and you call your family, it's like, oh, I'm excited to call my mom because you know she's going to be excited with you. Yeah. But it's not necessarily the case for LGBT. Yeah. Nope. I know. How, thank you. How about you, Jared, your boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I met my partner, Aaron, uh, at uh, Ferndale Pride last year. It was a complete random coincidence. I was volunteering with Affirmations and uh, he was there uh, drumming up business uh, uh, for the bank he works for and uh, showing his support for the LGBT community. I uh, had a table set up there and one of my friends introduced me to him, who was a mutual friend with him. And uh, we hit it off from the start, and it's been the best experience of my life. Uh, both of our families love each of us, and it's just been really great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for sharing that, too. And Nick, how about you and your relationship? Um, yes, I, on September 5th, it was our 11-year anniversary, and I met Stephanie on Match.com in July she was, um, she was originally from Flint. She was in California for many years working, and she was planning on moving back here. So we were emailing back and forth um, since July, you know, in July in 2008. And then she moved back here and went out to dinner on September 5th. So we still celebrate that anniversary when we first actually met in real life. That's awesome. And you have a, a child together. Yes, we do. We have a beautiful girl who's three and a half. She'll be four in December. <clears throat> and, you know, it makes yeah. so much sense earlier. You said, you know, I said how you self-identify and you said male. And, you know, you're really um, heterosexual male, right? Isn't that how you would self-identify yourself? That is, yeah. Right. I mean, it's one of the My identities. experiences have been different than that, but absolutely. Right. And, you know, I always like to tell that quote, I forget who who said it, but people who get confused about gender identity and sexual identity, that sexual identity is who I go to bed with and gender identity is who I go to bed as. Would you guys agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and let me just ask one, what would be one thing that you wanted to share? You, you're coming on this podcast. It's National Coming Out Day, and we're all at different generations here on this um, roundtable. Uh, what would you want to leave the listeners listening to this about just your coming out experience, maybe the best or the worst or something else that you want to leave them with? Jane, why don't you go first? Yeah, I guess it would be um, what kind of terms you use coming out with. Um I got a lot of people saying like, oh, my girlfriend even was like, she came out as bi first and then out as lesbian. And she was like, does that make you mad? Because that's a very common thing. Like, oh, do bisexuals get upset when people come out as bi first? And and obviously that's different for everybody. But for me, it's I don't mind because I know who I am and I know that my community is valid. Um, and I think that some people just take time to try out different things. And I think that's a great thing. I think there's a lot of terminology out there that's being created. And I think you know, language evolves. And so I think we should not hinder that. We should let people just keep trying different things on, figuring out who they are. And if you don't want labels, you don't have to do that either. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great thing. Is We're living in a really great time right now. We so, really are. Yeah. I always say that, you know, people get upset. Therapists are like, what do we do? Parents are like, what do we do? Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is the job of every kid is to have different identities and different mm -hmm. permissions. And we didn't have that in our generation, which is why yeah. so many people have been long-term closeted. Yep. And it won't be the same here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jane. How about you, Jared? What would you say you'd want everyone to know about the coming out experience? 
Yeah, I guess uh, my advice would be um, because we really have a unique opportunity not being a uh, part of like uh, heterosexual culture um, that affords us the unique uh, advantage of being able to explore all of our identities. Um, so I would just suggest that people take advantage of that, explore your gender identity, your sexual identity, your romantic identity, uh, your um, monogamy identity, all of the different identities that you can have, explore them. And that'll just make you so much more of a rich and beautiful person. I love that you're, um, you know, delineating that there's a sexual identity, a romantic identity, a relationship identity, a gender identity. You know, there really are. And it, it gives people permission to understand while many are related, they're not necessarily the same. It's not um, just one all the way around. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And Nick, what would you want to leave people with from this podcast about your coming out? Um, I definitely would like to leave two messages. Uh, the first one is for parents. And um, as for parents, when they, they question, you know, I hear often is, you know, my child really, I don't really believe that they're transgender. The internet, you know, made them this way and everything <laughs> oh else. Like, you I'm know, sorry. Oh you my. know, and a lot of parents, it's true. And a lot of parents <laughs> say, when you know, when I was a child, I didn't even know what my favorite ice cream was, you know, and, you know, my child now is doing all this with their gender. And I, you know, I tell them, well, you never questioned your gender, you know, thankfully for you, that's never had to be thing. And the biggest decision you had to make was what your favorite ice cream is. And that is probably one of your child, your child's thing too, is they don't know what their favorite ice cream is. In addition to not identifying with their body um, and to just listen to their children. Uh, they, they know who they are just as well as, the adult knew who they were as a child. Mm -hmm. And um, for intersex and, and trans folks out there, and if they're not sure if they want to start doing a medical transition or a social transition, um, they're debating on it. I always tell everybody just to follow their heart and their gut instinct. And if they truly are trans, if they truly do want to um, align their body with with their mind and their soul, the feeling of, of the need to transition will just keep getting stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. you know, there's no reason to rush into anything if you're not sure what you want to do, but always stay in tune with your heart and your mind. And eventually it'll get so strong where there is no other option. If, if they're questioning it. That's a great thing to end on. I really appreciate this round table. Thank each and every one of you, Jane, Jared and Nick for being on here and uh, happy national coming out day. Thank you. Thank you. you Thank too. you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Smart Sex, Smart Love. I'm Dr. Joe Court, and you can find me on joecourt.com. That's J-O-E-K-O-R-T.com. See you next time.